Our group is doing the Kingdom Plantae. We will be covering the plant divisions of ferns, mosses, and plants with seeds. Let's start with ferns. Ferns are a part of a plant division called Petrodophyta. They are unique in the plant kingdom since they do not reproduce by seeds or flowers. Instead, they go through a complicated sexual reproduction that takes two generations of ferns to fully complete. On the underside of the ferns' leaves, there are small seeds called sori. These sori release thousands and thousands of spores that start the reproduction process. The spores need lots of moisture to survive. Therefore, ferns need to live in moist, shaded areas. Each type of fern has a distinct pattern of sori, which helps scientists and gardeners identify them. Once a fern spore is fertilized, a fiddlehead starts to grow. A fiddlehead is a tightly curled baby fern that unfurls into an adult as it grows. Fiddleheads are delicacies in many countries. Another unique thing about ferns is that they have a vascular system. Ferns live in temperate to tropical areas due to their need for moisture. They can be as small as 2 millimeters in height, or can be fern trees that grow over 15 meters. Some types of ferns are, like mosses, epiphytes. That means that they grow on the stems or branches of other plants, yet get their own nutrients by photosynthesizing for themselves. Ferns contribute to organic material in the ground, which helps other plants grow. This means that ferns can actually be overgrown by other plants that they help to nourish. Ferns are thought of to be one of the first plants that grew on our planet and still remain a popular, attractive gardening plant today. Moving on to mosses. Mosses live in moist areas and are, like ferns, epiphys. This means they live on other things like dead and decomposing trees or rocks. They lack a vascular system, a xylem and phloem. Instead, they have a lightly extended cell, which helps carry nutrients through their body. This greatly limits their size. M mosses must collect water from small filaments called rhizoids. When mosses die, they become organic matter that fertilizes the soil for other plants like ferns. As within ferns, there are two generations of moss. The first generation is an actual plant growing and collecting nutrients, and the second generation is the plant producing spores for reproduction. Sperm transfer from the male sex organ to the female sex organ must occur in moist conditions. When the sperms mature, they are released and enter the female organ. When the sperm reaches the egg, the moss is officially considered into the second generation. In today's life, dead moss is called peat and is used commonly for fertilizer. Finally, we have seed plants. Gymnosperms are cone-bearing plants that have needles covered in wax that protect it from most weather from dry summers to cold winters. The seeds are naked and not in an enclosed shell. They are used to construct furniture, pulp, and paper. So, as you can guess, gymnosperms are most trees in general. There are two types of cones. One is male. They undergo mitosis to produce male pollen grains. The female have ovaries in which the megaspore male cell undergoes mitosis to produce some female pollen. The pollen then gets trapped on the sticky sap by the female cone and fertilization begins. The diploid zygo develops into an embryo, then becomes the seed. The mature seeds fall out of the female cones. It can be several years that the seedlings grow into mature plants that will produce their own cones. The angiosperm type of seed plants are flowers. There can be male, female, or even mixed. Within the chambers of the microspore mother cell undergoes mitosis to produce only one female megaspore. Pollen is aided by wind, 
insects, birds, and even bats. The pollen gets stuck to the sticky part of the stigma of another flower. When fertilization begins, the diploid zygote grows into an embryo, which turns into a seed. When the seeds start to grow, the ovaries start the fruit enclosing of the seeds. Fruit offers protection for the seeds and may aid in the dispersal of the seeds. The seedlings can produce mature plants in times ranging between a few months to several years. So now we've covered the kingdom plantae in just a few minutes. As you can see, plants are an important part of our everyday lives. They give us decorations, food, building supplies, medicine, and more. Hopefully this presentation gave you a little deeper look into the complex biology of the kingdom plantae.